All right, if you have done a lab about Beer's Law, you probably have a bunch of concentration and absorbance data. You've created several standardized samples of a chemical, put them into little cuvettes and measured the absorbance of them in a spectrophotometer. By graphing concentration of each sample on the x-axis, absorbance of each sample on the y-axis, and placing dots, if you're doing this by hand, or dots will appear on Microsoft Excel, if you're doing it on the computer, you'll get a graph that shows absorbance versus concentration, and it should be slightly or mostly linear. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that if you have data points that are way out of line from all the others, you can ignore them because they are outliers and you will not have to worry about it. Secondly, if your data is flattening out towards the end or high concentrations, it's probably because the absorbance is getting too high and increases in concentration won't result in the same amount of increase in absorbance. I don't want to say the solution's saturated, but there's hardly any light left for the spectrophotometer to, uh, to uh, detect once you get to high concentrations of highly absorbent chemicals. So, you'll probably want to start your line near zero, zero, and draw a straight line through most of your data. Now I'm going to choose to get rid of this one because it does look like it's starting to flatten out, but I'm choosing to keep this one. You may not. Now I'm going to draw a line at best fit. Microsoft Excel will do this for you or OpenOffice if you uh, think Microsoft is evil. So I'm going to draw this line of best fit here. I've got most of my data points near the line, about the same amount above as below. I probably could have had it increase just a little more. And what you want to do is calculate the slope of that line. Now, if you made it go through zero, zero, it'll be easy. If you didn't, that's okay. You just need two points and you can use slope equals x or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now I'm going to measure some point up here. Maybe I'll go over to point, no, that one doesn't fit. Point zero 0.03 on my graph leads me to about 0.4. Now, that was just a coincidence that it worked out to be a nice number. You'll probably have to estimate, or again, Microsoft Office or whatever will tell you what the slope is if you're using a computer. Now, I'm gonna do Y2 minus Y1. My Y2 is 0 0.4. My Y1 was zero. My X2 was 0 0.03. And my X1 was also zero. That gives me a slope of 0.4 divided by 0.03. That's 13.333. The units on your slope are going to be liters per mole. The reason is absorbance, which is what was in the numerator of the fraction, is unitless, and moles per liter were the units of the denominator. Now, who cares? Well, you can calculate the molar absorptivity that's uh, capital Epsilon in a Greek letter, as long as you've plotted absorbance on your y-axis and concentration on your x-axis, because y equals mx plus b. Now again, I fixed my y-intercept to be zero, and there is no y-intercept when you plot data according to this type of graph. Now, what that means is that my E times L, my molar absorptivity, constant times the path length of the cell. I've never done a spectrophotometry experiment where my path length wasn't one centimeter equals your slope. That's 13.333 liters per mole. Divide out the one centimeter. Oh, there's no times there. And I've calculated my molar absorptivity to be 13.333 divided by one is 13.333 liters per mole centimeters. Weird unit that you've probably never seen before, but it will help the units cancel out. The higher this number, the more absorbent the compound you used was to the wavelength you chose. Okay. Now, 
You probably also were given an unknown sample and you had to run it through the spectrophotometer and figure out what its concentration was. Now, if you're given the absorbance, you can calculate the concentration by rearranging that original formula. The concentration is the absorbance divided by the molar absorptivity constant and the path length again. I'm going to do it with you. Absorbance is unitless. It goes on top. Molar absorptivity is what you calculated from the slope of your standard curve. For me, it was 13.333 liters over moles centimeters. And again, L, path length, is almost certainly one centimeter for you. You can plug this into your calculator. Centimeters cancels with centimeters. And because I have liters per mole in the denominator, my units here are going to be moles per liter. Okay, 0.376 divided by 13.33333 gives me 0 0.0282. Now, I don't know how many sig figs you have. That will depend on how many sig figs you use throughout your experiment. But a concentration of 0 0.028 moles per liter for me gives an absorbance of 0.376, and that shouldn't be too much of a surprise because 0 0.028 lies about here for me, and that absorbance is right about here between 0.3 and 0.4. That absorbance tells me it's that concentration because the molar absorptivity and path length can be calculated from the slope of the standardized curve. Cool, I hope that was clear enough and I hope that that helps you solve your Beer's Law lab problems. Best of luck.